I am Lucas Mack, and I'm on a mission to see the hurting get healed and the healed go out and heal others in order for all of us to experience the true love and light we desire. This podcast is me sharing my journey with you so you don't feel alone in your journey. Welcome to the Golden Rule Revolution. Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another episode of the Golden Rule Revolution. I am Lucas Mack. Thank you for joining me, and I am incredibly happy to bring today's guest on. Cole Bombino is is incredible. As you listen to this episode, we talk about what human design is, how people can find their truest, purest soul identity here on this earth. I've, I've gotten into it and you'll hear the journey um, that Cole and I talk about. But at the end of this episode, I want you to stick around for the to the very end because she offers something so incredibly gracious to every listener. So no matter where you are around the world, make sure you sign up for this offering and get this experience with Cole because human design is something that I am being called to step into more deeply and I invite you to do the same. So without any further delay, brothers and sisters, here's my sister, Cole Bombino. Well, dear brothers and sisters, like I shared in the opening, this is a treat. I, Cole and I have been in similar circles for so long and I've heard how amazing she is. And truly yesterday I had the most incredible experience and sis, Thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. And thank you for doing this deep, amazing, cosmic, multidimensional soul work because it is so important. Mm. Thank you. The so welcome. <laughs> like gushing over here. My heart is like expanding. And oh my gosh. I feel the love. Thank you. Thank oh. you. It's an honor. I'm so glad we're able to do this and we're able to collaborate. And it's just, it's an honor. So I love it. Well, human design, I, I, we're going to get into it, but I, I would love for you to share your journey of how you, you, you know, you came into the world looking around, trying to figure life out. And then here we are. Yeah. And I know we met through ALA, which was a big, you know, tr- massively life changing um, moment process component of my life, and I know it was for you as well. So, share share a little bit of your story, how you got into even doing human design. Yeah. So, my story. There's like so many stories. Which one? <laughs> right. But um, with human design specifically, it was actually introduced to me through my mentor. Mm. And I was in this really deep, dark Mm. night of the soul. And it was just a really heavy time for me. And at the time, my mentor wasn't my mentor. It was divine synchronicities that um, brought us together. And then I started to work with her. Mm. And she's so much more than a mentor. She's like an advisor and a partner in my life. And that's another reason why I know that human design is this, you know, divine gift that I'm here to utilize for myself and then share with others because it came from such a sacred person in my life. And she introduced it. it to me and you know, she started to go into my human design and I was just in this really dark place at the time. So it, it brought a, it it was confronting for Mm -hmm. sure, but also brought a lot of compassion and understanding to parts of myself that I had been rejecting my whole life. I finally Mm -hmm. could understand and see that, you know, I wasn't broken or this wasn't messed up and I wasn't um, built wrong. Yeah. It was just not fitting into the box of what society, you know, my family and, you know. Yeah, the world. Yeah, the world was 
asking me and all of us to fit into. I wasn't fitting into the box and human design showed me that that was okay. And um, I interject something real quick while you're sharing. Uh, you said a word that I don't know how many people feel this, but I have felt this. I write about this in my book that's about to come out. I always felt wrong, <laughs> not bad, not like wrong. Like something in me was wrong and I never fit in. Mm. It was, I was like the most popular person, mm. but also the most ostracized, like outcasted person. It was so strange. And you say this word wrong too. And it's, mm. it's profound. I think many people, if they're honest or get the chance, will say they feel wrong. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. How many of us can relate to the feeling that either something is wrong with us or um, we're wrong or we're bad in some way. And human design really brought love into those places mm -hmm. where I was feeling that. And since I felt that for myself, it was just, it started to naturally pour out of me. People were just asking me for me to help them understand their charts. And it was just flowing out of me. And then I couldn't, that's like how I was seeing the world and seeing people. I was starting to see their designs even without even pulling their chart. And then, you know, the rest is history. I dove all in as I do. That's part of how I'm designed to be. I'm all in. I'm all in and I love to go deep. That's awesome. And I went deep. So I've been on this journey for seven years. Mm. Yeah. I'm a certified living your design guide and I'm still a student. Like I'm a student first. I'm absolutely a student first and anything I share, um, whether it's human design or any of the other modalities I, I work with, um, cause this is a life path for me. I've been in this yeah. world since I was a child. Like it's just always, um, been a part of me mm. and um, anything that I share it's I'm a student of it first absolutely I love it mm -hmm. in your family because how did you were, were, did, were you raised in a religious home at all yes Catholic Catholic okay mm -hmm. so this doesn't fit in that box this mm -hmm. yeah how have you and not talking about the your family or the real the religious structure per se but how have you taken what you've learn for yourself and made it your own without the guilt because we know on it with the jewish mom and a catholic dad i know guilt it's like the super bowl of guilt you know on both sides so how did you take that for yourself and internalize it so it became your own path hmm. well i've always questioned things mm. so when I was little, a lot of the questioning was internal because obviously when we're young, our survival depends on yeah. our family. Yeah. So to stay safe, it was a lot of internal questioning, but I was questioning the structures and the system I was being raised in. And I was always curious, trying to find my place. And it's been a very gradual journey to releasing the guilt around mm. recognizing that I have a different way of seeing the world. Cool. It's been a journey and it continues to be like, I am still doing work around owning what's true for me within my family. That's the hardest place. Mm. You know, that's the hardest place for, for me and what I notice for most people to right. really show up as their unique individuated self because mm -hmm. our survival skills and our safety patterns, um, you know, came about within the family structure. Right. It's been a gradual path. It's there's not one secret <laughs> um, pill <laughs> to say yeah. the truth, but you know, for anybody who is really seeking to let go of the guilt or the shame around being different, whether it's within your family, 
Um, and by different more, what I mean is like your uniqueness, your individuatedness. Mm. Um, if you're struggling with that, just giving yourself grace, like that's been such a key recipe um, item for me is grace, grace and compassion as I'm learning mm. how to really um, allow myself to be myself. Wow. Human design. <laughs> I have to tell you about, I didn't tell you this yesterday. Um, when I first heard about it, mm -hmm. Lauren, my wife got in um, to human design and she was learning and she had her reading done and, and learned herself. And she said she finally felt like she could love herself for the first time. And there was so much beauty. And I was like, and I've always, and it's funny because it's I probably a survival mechanism that I've developed, but I was like, you can't tell me what I am. I'm whatever I want to be. <laughs> like, you can't, like I'll be, no, you, if you say that I will, I am that, then I will immediately break it and be something else. Mm -hmm. And that did not serve me. <laughs> as well. Finally mm -hmm. being humbled and saying, okay, what? And you know what that was, is I still didn't understand how to love myself in that mm -hmm. moment. And as I've learned to love myself and be proud of myself and, and step into who I fully am mm -hmm. learning human design has only made me love myself more like Lauren experience and like so many experience. And instead of rejecting it and wanting to break it now, like you said, that's like an infinite world. It's like a universe to understand. I'm like, that's really cool that we are so beautiful and so unique and the vastness of who we are will take forever. It could take the rest of our lives to yeah. get a drop in the bucket, you know? That's so true. And I will say, because I've seen your chart, <laughs> I will say that um, part of that experience is a part of your design too. the rejecting of it. Like you've got this, <laughs> you know, heretic inside of you that, you know, if we say the sky is blue, you're going to point out that it's white or gray. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that you can't see the blueness as well, but you know, you're going to show what, what we're not talking about or what we're not seeing. Right. Right. So there's a little bit of that for you. That's so awesome. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you said it, I was like, oh yeah, I see that in this chart too. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's more than one thing, right? Cause everything is multi-layered, right? Mm -hmm. And um, this is a part of the human design process, just like it's a part of any true um, awakening process or personal growth process or um you know, evolutionary process yeah. is to first, you know, reject, <laughs> you know, reject because yes. especially if you're coming into human design and you've been conditioned as we all have, that's just a part of this world and this reality we're living in. It's not incorrect to be conditioned. It's a part of the process. Mm, um, good. But you have to break through those conditioning walls. It's like a part of your identity, a part of who you think you were has to die, <laughs> you know, to really become what you actually are. And so um, parts of ourselves can fight against that. And especially if we've been rejecting that part of ourselves, you know, I came into human design and the parts of myself that I had the most rejection over the parts of myself that I was denying the parts of myself that I didn't want to be true about me mm. were the ones that were, I mean, it was painful mm. when I got into human design, it was painful and liberating both at the same time. Mm. So, but that pain isn't bad pain. It's good pain. It's yeah. It's the healing, the transforming. It's like the pain that a caterpillar's body must go through when it yeah. completely breaks apart into mush to become a butterfly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's not That's uncommon. It's not uncommon to have that experience that you had with human design. And I think it's important to mention because a lot of times when people come into human design or any type of 
spiritual development or personal growth um, process, they expect it to be butterflies and rainbow and just mm. dancing into transformation. Right. I'm not saying that path is impossible, but that's not been my path. It has mine's not been more like either. Yeah, mine's been more like the caterpillar turning into mush first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So funny you're saying the caterpillar. I, I was talking to a friend today. We were catching up, and she was like, "How are you?" And I said, "I really," because she know she knew that been in a dark season with Lauren's health and all the things that we've gone through. I said, "I really feel like I'm coming out of the chrysalis. Like my wings are just now slowly. Like I'm not flying yet, but I'm beginning to stretch them out. And like, whoa! And it to get to this place." <laughs> has been excruciating and yet the lessons in healing and learnings and understanding and wisdom the gray in the beard is all wisdom that's what i tell people mm -hmm. uh i couldn't have gotten it if it would have been easy because i would have thought that i knew i would have thought that i knew everything mm. tumbling, breaking tearing apart process to just okay i surrender and then, then i remember like plato said when he was old he said the older i am the more i know or the the older i get the less i know and that's how i feel it's like well you're talking about you're a student of this even though you're you know, certified teacher and all this, but it's, it's a life path of learning. And that's how I feel with human design. The more I know and learn, the more I realize I don't know. Mm. Like there's so much, it's so deep. Um, and that's the reality of ourselves too. Mm. It's so funny in relationships when someone says, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> or we expect ourselves to know somebody it's just that's like mind boggling to me because mm. we're we have so much depth to us there's so much for us to know and to learn about ourselves and that goes for the person sitting across from you yeah. like there is infinite aspects mm. <laughs> of the person sitting across from you of yourself. And so I think that's pretty dangerous when we think we know. <laughs> that's like one of the most dangerous things. And totally. that's the beauty of this path we're on is, you know, mm -hmm. when that's the beauty of being humbled. <laughs> yes. Yes. And the value of it too, is it reminds us that there's so much more to discover. Yeah, that's right. One of the quotes in my book, I say, there is no unity without humility. Mm. And I think there is this massive, I'm hoping that many are taking the lesson of this humbling process so that we can come back into oneness and love for one another, but it takes humility. Really. Yeah. yeah. So and once you've been humbled once, you realize, okay, this is probably going to happen a few more times. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Like, that, don't get too comfortable. Is, it's like. Mm. Right. Right. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. That's, that's such a good. It becomes like to, to graduate to the next level. It's going to take a humbling. It's going to take, you know, one of the sayings that I heard at ALA all the time was the only way out is through. And that through process is a very humbling process because there's no bypassing it's like well you got to go in it you got to face it yeah the cool thing though is that we can choose it we can choose into it when i study human design when i do the work that i do um on myself because like i said i'm first a student this is a lifestyle for me to be mm -hmm. constantly excavating and exploring myself and observing my shadow and opening myself to seeing my gifts and my beauty. And this is a lifestyle. It's daily. It's every moment. Mm. Um, when we choose it, it doesn't have to shock us. Life mm -hmm. will force us into humbling experiences or we can choose it by choosing mm. this. Kind so, of good. Path. so good. That's so mm. good. It's important. Um, 
So let's talk about what the heck human design is. Yeah. For those that don't know, and I had never heard about it until maybe 2021 is finally when it came into our consciousness. So what is human design? Yeah. So human design is a combination of modern and ancient sciences, and it's a synthesis of all these sciences. Some of the sciences are proven and, you know, are more of our modern sciences. And then some of them are sciences that are yet to be pro proven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if there's so one thing I've observed about science is that once you prove something, then it gets, you know, there's, yeah, there's more, right. There's more. Oh, we, oh. we have so much to still discover. Mm. So, but what it shows you, it's like a map of yourself. It's a map of yourself, a map of your conscious self, a map of your unconscious self. You know, when I look at somebody's chart, <laughs> it's so funny because sometimes when people don't know human design, I'll be like, hey, can I have your chart? Uh, <laughs> they have no idea how they're basically letting me see into their soul. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so deep. I can see, you know, the, I can see the person's heart, their mind, their body, you know, how they can make the correct decisions in their life, what their energy is like, you know, what their, um, you know, most impactful conditioning has been, what their gifts are, what their genius is, their life path. It's just, it's this beautiful map to you. It's a beautiful map to you, um, your challenges, your gifts, the path that you're on. And it um, gives a lot of clarity to um, you as you're on your journey and understanding mm. yourself and then understanding others. Because I treat people and look at people so differently because of human design. Everybody is designed to be treated differently. Everybody mm, has okay. um, a different way that is most respectful to communicate with them and interact with them. And human design can give us all these keys and these tips to really respecting ourselves and respecting each other. So wow. the simplest way to put it is it's a map to you. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Um Gosh, there's so many fascinating. Th so can you explain the four? It, did you call them? And I was trying to tell someone about it last night. Do you call them personas? Do you call them archetypes? Like what are, what do we call the four different types? Yeah. So there are four different aura types. Aura types. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you might hear it described as an aura type, an energy type, or a type. Ah, okay. So those words can be used interchangeably. And we have four different energy types. And these four different energy types, what it's describing, when I say energy type, what I mean is like your aura, your energy field around you. Like if you mm -hmm. looked at yourself and you imagined a bubble around you of energy, mm -hmm. it's your energetic field is the type that you have. This is one part of human design, but this is the first part to learn. So mm -hmm. if you're just getting into human design and you um, are wanting to explore it a little, little bit, you can pull your free chart. And when you pull your free chart, you'll see something that says type. Mm -hmm. You're going to look for one of these four types and the four, well, it's four types, but of the four types, they have subtypes. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got manifestors, mm -hmm. we've got generators, and a pretty common subtype of generators is a manifesting generator. Mm -hmm. But they're the same type of aura. So that's something people get a little bit confused about is sometimes people say or think there's five types. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. the it's the same. So generators and manifesting generators have the same aura. Mm -hmm. So we've got the projectors. In addition to that, so that's the third type. There are many subtypes of projectors. We won't go into all of those, but mm. all projectors have the same type of aura. Mm. And you've got reflectors. So four main types. So if you're just getting into human design and you're wanting to understand the first 
piece that's really juicy for you to get into, I would invite you to explore and study your type. And you could study this piece alone (laughs) for a long while. Mm -hmm. I was telling you that when I first got into human design, I studied my type for a year before I really got into anything else. Yeah, I just did a program recently where we did eight weeks and that's not even long enough at all. Just on the type wow. <laughs> alone. Uh, so it, that's it's like human design has so many components. If you pull your chart, you're going to look at it and you're going to be like, oh, what is all this? There's so much Yeah. within each little piece. It's so deep. So in order to not get overwhelmed, you know, start with type. Mm. Just understanding your energy type. And then understanding the energy types of the different people in your life, you'll realize, oh, what I need is so different than what that person needs. Yes. So much sense why this challenge is existing in our relationship. Totally. What what it is for me understanding the different types is really taking judgment away from in and, and, and understanding the dynamics of relationship. Like we all need all the types we need each other and to honor each other for being unique as opposed to trying to fit everyone to be exactly the same. Yeah. That's, that's the medicine. That's the medicine of having a system like this. Cause it paints it so clear. Yeah. I used to really struggle with this dynamic I had with my brother where it felt like he was so judgmental. Like everything I did, there was a judgment about. Mm -hmm. And then I got into human design and I really rejected that part of him. I didn't like it. I thought it was something he needed to change about himself. And then I get into human design and I pull his chart. And of course he has something called the channel of judgment. (laughs) It's actually a part of his design and used correctly this channel of judgment is the um, expert critic. You know, we need those people to be able to see that kind of detail and show us and teach us how we can improve. Mm. So often what you will feel like people have rejected you for is usually part of your what we call definition or this consistent life force about you, this consistent aspect about you that is constantly broadcasting this information. So he's broadcasting this information of judgment. I don't have that channel. Mm. So my energy really absorbs it, but it's a foreign energy for me. I don't have that energy in my body. So of course it feels wrong in my body and i want to reject that part of him but once we study human design and can see our differences when that comes up i can see oh wow there's a gift in this Mm, play with how can i pull this gift out of him almost so good that's so good like what we're talking about for me i always talked about i was so afraid i was constant i was like oh son i'm 6'3", 250, not a small person, a big presence. But before ALA specifically, I was like a seven-year-old in this body. I was like this little boy. I couldn't feel fill uh, into this body because I was still scared. I was still afraid. And it's amazing that facing that fear has made me so courageous. And now I'm like, all right, well, I feel the fear. Got to go, got to do it. And then what's bizarre for me is that's how I found self-love. Like I am so proud of myself Aww. for doing really hard things and speaking really hard truths, even when I was afraid and I'm proud of myself and I love myself. And that's how I found self-love is through the fear. It's really mm-hmm. strange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you should be proud of yourself. I mean, this mm. path is no joke. Oh, no. <laughs> it's no, no joke. No, no. Mm-hmm. Do you, I mean, I think businesses definitely could benefit from like I, when I had my company and we had 12 full-time employees, I had 
strength finders 2.0 and i and that was good um but it was not even it was like mm -hmm. like scratch not even scratching the surface like i wish companies honored the humanity of their employees through this system that would i think would radically transform the world absolutely yes so there is um there are companies doing it and there is yeah. like within human design there is another subsection that is for businesses oh, to cool. make it more approachable for a corporate mm. uh, environment i've definitely played with supporting businesses yeah with this and you're right like we are definitely evolving and we're evolving right now we're in a time where we're being asked to to really develop our individuated selves prior mm. to this we were it was tribal very tribal very yeah. tribal yeah and now i mean we can tell more people we had a couple of years there we where yeah. we were all isolated and with ourselves and being asked to really look at ourselves and connect to ourselves and understand yeah. ourselves and um that's definitely um a time that we're in and we're going to be evolving into more group like conscious consciousnesses mm. and that's the transformation we are undergoing or being asked to undergo where we we need to work together and understanding these types and how they work and the gifts and the roles that they play is going to be very important <laughs> mm. yeah yeah what's been a moment where you've worked with a client and they thought they were one way or has there been a, a point where someone thought they were one thing but they were another thing and they've given themselves grace to shift into who they are <laughs> it's so funny and just uh, like yeah. i instantly every client that i work with wants to be something hmm. different than what they are so a lot of the work is they've been conditioned to be a certain way and they think they are a certain way, but they actually struggle. They're not able to be what they think they are. Like, for example, let's give this example. Um, if someone from the human design perspective, you know, we have the mind and then we have the throat and we have many other parts mm. of, the, of the, of the body and the system and the energy centers. But the mind connects to the throat. A lot mm -hmm. of people expect themselves to be able to speak their mind. They get frustrated if they can't speak their mind. They think, mm -hmm. I have all these thoughts and ideas. Why can't I speak them out? Or they expect themselves to be able to manifest their ideas. The huh. throat is the manifestation center. So, some people aren't designed to do that. <laughs> Some people are designed to have these beautiful thoughts and ideas and have this playground of the mind, but it's meant for them. They don't have a consistent connection to their throat where they're meant to express everything their mind is saying. Mm -hmm. But so much of our personal development is telling us, well, you got to speak your truth. So yeah, you figure out how right. to say everything that you need to say. But some times we're not designed to that we can sync up to each other and then with certain people we have that flow naturally but yeah in all moments that person may not be designed that way but they've been trained or thought or told by someone in their life like i should be able to take my thoughts and express them or i should be able to take my thoughts and put them into action but sometimes you're not designed to have your thoughts go into action you're just supposed to, you're designed to enjoy those thoughts and maybe sometimes you have these moments where it's correct for you to put those thoughts into action wow that's one example for myself when i first speaking of types when i first came into human design i was really confused that i was a manifesting generator i felt like i was a projector like I really resonated with being a projector and um, I really wanted to be a projector because I was resonating with it. I really rejected my type. 
Mm. for myself. And it wasn't actually until almost five years in that I had this moment of taking in some information about the manifesting generator that clicked into my body and I felt the beauty and the power of being a manifesting generator. It took five years. Wow. And then, <laughs> then there's more. And then probably a year later, I was studying more as the student that I am. Sure. And I realized I will never make this mistake with my clients. Like now I always show them this in the right moment if it's correct for them, because Mm. we're all designed to, or we're all meant to get different bits of information and divine timing. But I realized that my personality is a projector and the personality is what the mind is connected to, what the mind is aware of Mm. about yourself. It's my unconscious connection that makes me a manifesting generator. So I'm unaware of it. It's unconscious to me. So then I could have compassion for my another layer of compassion for myself that was allowing me to accept, wow, you know, I, I, I understand now why I rejected this part of myself for so long because my, I, my mind thought that's what I was. I was actually yeah. designed to think I was a projector. That's how intricate this system is. Is that like, how is that? Is that designed meaning the your family structure? Like where does that design for the personality come from? So when you look at your chart, mm-hmm. you're going to see a personality part of your chart and a design part of your chart. Mm. And we are, you are the quantum of that. So cool. the quantum of that makes something more than just, it's kind of like a marriage, right? Or um, having a child. Mm. The child is the quantum of the two parents. It's not like it's half one and half of the other. It's right. something totally new. Yeah. So, In your chart, if you're looking at your chart or you look at your chart, there's parts of your chart that are in red and parts of your chart that are in black. The black is your personality. Oh, interesting. It's your design. Wow, cool. Yeah. So I did actually look at yours. I did actually look at what you were personality wise and what you were design wise, just in case that was meant to come through for you. But the personality is like, Mm. it's what we're aware of. So it's who we think we are. We think we're only the personality. We think that's everything. Um, We think that's all of us. It's like if a child thought it was only its mother. Wow. But it's not. It's a quantum of the mother and the father creating something totally new. Yeah. Fascinating. Do those ever, are those always, are there always two distinct, meaning like is the personality and the unconscious ever the same? Do you ever see like all red? or all black does somebody's chart have all red or all black no there's always a design imprint and always a personality imprint okay okay Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so it's amazing it's amazing i know it's deep it's definitely so i'm curious what do you remember what my personality is is Mm -hmm. is it different yeah yeah so your personality is actually a reflector So it's not surprising to me that you're like, I feel so different. I feel so different from everybody because that's definitely the experience of the reflector. Fascinating. Mm, Yeah. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I looked at it because. Life. Life. Yeah. I thought it might come up (laughs) and I thought it might be relevant to you. The reflector is also wide open, wide open, sensitive, takes in a lot. (laughs) Does that resonate with you? (laughs) Oh, yes. In fact, one of the things that Lauren and I are learning in in, uh, counseling right now in our marriage is how she's understanding how sensitive I am, Mm. where she never thought she always thought she was sensitive, but she's not. (laughs) She's really not. Not that she's not sensitive and sweet, but you know what I mean? Like. I'm hypersensitive uh, mm-hmm. and I have a son that is also hypersensitive and he's also a projector and 
actually I get emotional right now, but I look at him as who I would have been. Mm. And he is so like sweet and outgoing and loving. And like, we were watching a show the other night and he's like, I want to go play with this guy, uh, this kid. And I was like, I thought that kid was mean to you at school. He goes, dad, I've forgiven him. And I go, you've forgiven him. I go, did he apologize? He goes, no, dad, but I just, I forgave him. And I was like, wow. So powerful. So powerful. And I'm like, that's, you were such a beast. My children are, I don't know, like divine souls that came into these bodies. But um, anyway, I just learning that I've been so sensitive in a, in a house where sensitivity was not allowed at all at all Mm -hmm. and now like unwinding all of it like i've been so wound. i've been wound so tight oh now i can breathe like oh okay yeah that's what it feels like a huge breath of relief Mm. when we allow ourselves to recognize how we're unique And we give ourselves permission to explore that, even when it can be confronting at times. Yeah. The result can be a lot of relief, a lot of relief. I felt so much, I have felt, and still to this day, feel so much relief as I study my design and explore my design. I'm seven years in and still very much studying myself. How, like, what have you experienced as, as far as like, how do people come into this space and work with you in the first place? How do, how do, how do people hear about human design? Oh, I mean, all sorts of ways. It's definitely, I would say miraculous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Usually synchronicities because human design is one of those things that you really got to feel the yes to or the pull to or the curiosity about it's not for you if somebody's pushing it onto you it's not for you if you're forcing it it's not to say that it's not for you ever but wait wait till you get the spark or the curiosity to explore. So I see people coming into it in all sorts of ways. I mean, how people find me, it's usually referrals, friends, you know, social media, just these divine things. All of a sudden somebody is following me (laughs) and then they've just been, they've been brought to me in some way. Amazing. Uh, So all sorts of unique and and amazing ways. But I do notice sometimes that by the time somebody's ready to really dive in, it might be, you know, their third time of hearing it about it. It wasn't like that for me. It was like, I had never heard of it and I was all in. However, I have heard a lot of stories of people saying, I got introduced to human design three years ago and I just wasn't ready for it. And it took me, you know, four more people coming up to me and just talking about it. Wow. Really dive into it. You'll notice, like you'll start to hear about it all of a sudden, you know, you hear this conversation that you and I I are having. And then two weeks later, somebody will mention human design. And then three weeks later, somebody will mention human design. So it's just beautiful synchronicities because it's, it's definitely um, incredible, sacred wisdom and information. So mm. it's being brought to the people who are ready for it yeah. and are meant to receive something deep and profound for, from it. It kind of reminds me of, um, I was deep into the psychedelic world for, for a while. And, you know, they would say like, when mother Aya calls you, then, you know, you got to listen to the call and it feels very similar. And really, truly this feels, I feel like I've done every modality of really have gone. This feels the most like being the, in the presence of a hug. Mm. How I describe oh. it. Yeah. Like being in the presence of a hug. And, and it's just a beautiful, 
I think really important. And I, everyone watching and listening, wherever you are around the world, please reach out to Cole. She, we're going to talk about an offering she has at the end. And I forgot to bring it up at the beginning. I'll do it in the intro, but um, it's just important. I think as we're, as I look at the world, we're moving towards oneness, but we haven't been able to move towards oneness until the individual learned wholeness. Mm-hmm. So the declaration of we, the people is when the people as individuals self-actualize the, 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 the beauty of themselves. And in that, that is where the oneness is like mm-hmm. cosmic beyond like you said, that's what's happening right now. We are all learning our sovereign autonomy and the beauty of our individuality and bringing that gift and the gift is honored in the collective. And before it was like, you had to deny yourself to be part of the collective, Mm -hmm. or you were just so individualistic that it was like, you were rejecting the collective, but we, not you, but we were rejecting the collective as individuals without understanding ourselves. So there was this pendulum swing back and forth in the book, the fourth turning talks about it every 80 years, the, so 80 years ago was World War II, which was another we moment. And then the, and then 40 years later, the 1980s was a me moment. So mm-hmm. it was all about individualism. Mm-hmm. And then we come now we're at the height of the we, but the we were finally learning. And there's so many different teachings that we're at the end of this age that we're the beautiful thing about Aquarius. And I'm going to deviate just for a second. Mm-hmm. It's, it's water and water washes everything mm-hmm. and brings oneness we are water mm-hmm. and so it's like i i just see the beauty of this teaching coming to the world right now and the consciousness of everyone like everyone do it sign up <laughs> go take it i was crying mm-hmm. such a big breakthrough yesterday that was massive i went on a walk this morning and i was still sitting with like i mean i will continue but it, it was i was sitting with it while i was walking so i was walking with it uh, so profound and so beautiful. And thank you for creating that space because, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's like, it's so delicious. <laughs> it's so delicious when we can, crack ourselves open in this space that feels like a hug where we're held and then just let the light of love shine into us and and just permeate our body. And I do want to mention something about oneness. So I used to think that oneness was emerging where we merge and kind of dissolve into each Mm -hmm. other. But what I discovered was that oneness, what I've discovered in my own experience and my understanding is that oneness is actually, like you said, the individual being whole. So all of the different components operating correctly, uniquely as themselves so that it can be one, it can be whole. It's like if, if we look at the body, right, the heart has to be healthy and operating as a heart and the lung has to be healthy and operating as a lung let's imagine i'm the heart and you're the lung like we're still unique our functions our expressions what we do is unique but we are one we operate as this whole being so that's been really cool to discover because it gives me and it gives others the permission to um know that discovering your individuality saying yes to you choosing to live from the center of who you are versus Mm. who others have told you to be or who you've been trained to think makes a good person when you really choose from your center even when sometimes that means saying no or what somebody would think is not nice or kind or polite it's actually the most loving and healthy thing you can do for yourself but also for the whole 
<laughs> it's so good. Oh, it's so good, it says. <laughs> oh my You're God. awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm so I love how you just take everything in. You're just, yeah, yeah. It's so great. See, it's good. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> you know, I said, I talk about God a lot and I'm glad you said, no, it's okay. You can say God yesterday. Cause I, you know, I don't like to offend anyone. I like, you know, just cause I'm sensitive. I like to be gentle with people. However, religion, especially Christianity is taught like, well, the Bible says that Christ is the head of the body and then we're all the body and, but it's very corporal and it's very it's like, like the Catholic church is like the universal church. I and mean, you fit into this, like, little tiny cut out figurine into this mold. And then you're like, Oh, that's, I guess it. And what's so beautiful about this is that same truth that Christ consciousness and, and Christ means Messiah. Messiah means the anointed one to do what mm -hmm. people always leave it at the anointed one. Okay. To do what? To bring, freedom. <laughs> bring freedom. Christ brings freedom. Christ consciousness is freedom. It is pure conscious freedom. So, when Christ is the head and we are all free to be in the body as one, it's like, it's so amazing. I'm like, this is the most amazing time. It's amazing. It is so cool. And this whole cosmic design that we all get to be part of this, it, it's what an honor. And it's such an honor to have you on the podcast and, and mm -hmm. really finally you know, I wasn't ready for you. I mean, that's just the bottom line. As most people aren't. <laughs> it's so good. You're like, I love you, but I, I'm not ready for you. I love you. I'm not ready for you. Oh, like, oh good. It's I'll, so I'll, good. I'll wait patiently, but I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so glad the timing could not have been better. And Wow. Is there anything else you want to share about human design? I want to make sure that you feel like you. Yeah. Let me see. Let me drop in. What I just want to share is that it doesn't matter if you haven't understood anything about what we've been talking about with human design. Um, what matters is to feel into yourself feel if you're feeling some sort of pull, whether it's a pull to this conversation, whether it's a pull to, to me, whether it's a pull mm. to asking Lucas about something, whatever it is, listen, listen to what's within you. And if you're not feeling a pull, if you're like, no, then wait, <laughs> wait, just listen to yourself and, and know that you're loved and you're supported and yeah we can't mess it up this is our lives mm, and such a good word yeah yeah this is this is your life this is your life and yeah allow yourself to just move in the direction that feels correct for you you have permission to be you you're invited to be you mm. what you have to offer just by being you in the simplest ways, the simplest ways, the way you say hello, the meal you choose for dinner, the mm -hmm. shirt that you put on, all of that, that is so much. <laughs> that is enough. That is a gift. That is a gift of being you and giving this gift of you to this planet at this time. And that's, that's all you're here to do. So, mm -hmm. yeah. You're loved, but <laughs> you're whether you're in your in your I I don't know if I can swear on this podcast, oh, yeah, so I, I can't. Free, yeah. So you know, just know all of you is welcome. Whether it's your inner asshole or your, <laughs> awesome, you're loved. It's all invited. It's all yeah. welcome. I love it all. So. That's right. See, you're loved, and you can say whatever you want to say. That's good. <laughs> oh, um, what. It, so you have an offer and I, and I will talk about it in the intro as well, but you want to share what the offer is to everyone listening? Yeah. So I have this foundations to human design session that I offer. It's a 60 minute session. And in this time we go over the most important aspects of your design and then also whatever sort of 
magic comes through that is really specific to you that is meant to be revealed and shared with you. So Mm -hmm. it's a foundational session. It's all done via Zoom. So you can be wherever in the world that you are. And normally this is already a special rate. Normally it's 222 and it's a special rate so that people can come and be exposed to human design. But because you're so awesome, Lucas, and I just want to gift your people. I'm so happy to be connecting with Mm. you who is listening. Um, The gift I'm offering for the first 10 people is um, 50% off. So they're 111 for the first 10 people who sign up. So I think you'll be providing the link to that. If you feel the pull, the call to me towards human design, just know you're invited. I'd love to collaborate with you and see what kind of love the universe wants to give to you through this amazing everyone pl- do it <laughs> i can't wait to go go find the link below right now in the notes and sign up with cole sis i i know this will not be our last time doing something beautiful like this in your yeah. your aura yeah. your energy aura is so beautiful and thank you for your presence and being present and thank you for dropping in and listening listening for those who have ears to hear let them hear and so i bless you dear sister thank you so much i just you have blessed me so much through this just this conversation and i'm honored to have you on so thank you yeah, the feeling is so mutual. I'm honored. And yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what else we could potentially create. And thank you. Thank you. Such an honor to be here. Well, please, like I said, sign up, take this time, honor yourself in this journey. Thank you, dear sister Cole, for your amazing gift to be present, to bring us all into that present place where we can receive more love. I love you, sis. Thank you. And everyone watching, dear brother and sister, I send you love from wherever you are in the world, whatever is happening in your personal life, in the collective life that you are in, in the society, in the culture, in the country, in the nation, in the world, let love have its perfect work in you. Release fear, reject fear and receive love. That is today's calling. That is tomorrow's calling. Love will be waiting for you every moment of your life. And the minute you find the courage to face that which you are afraid of to face the most, most, to speak it out and get it out of your mouth, (laughs) and then finally release that fear. That's where you'll find love's healing, blessing, and fullness within you. I love you all. Thank you for listening. This is the Golden Rule Revolution. I am Lucas Mack, and I will talk to you on the next episode. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. For support in your journey, go to my website, lucasmack.com.